So, good morning and welcome back to the NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis uh, part 1. And we have been discussing total synthesis of complex natural products. And in the last lecture, we talked about uh, the total synthesis of an anti cancer reagent called Taxol. And we will continue to discuss uh, about more complex natural products and particularly anti cancer reagents. In 90s, uh, when we talked about Taxol, I also mentioned there are other complex natural products which were used as uh, anti cancer agents. There are at least five naturally occurring compounds which were supposed to be, you know, very potent against various cancers. Uh, the one which we already discussed was Taxol, uh, which is quite complex. And the second one uh, was Elithrobin, which you can see that uh, it's quite complex uh, in structure, almost similar to Taxol. And the third one uh, was Epothelons. Uh, here I am showing the structure of Epothelon A and uh, there are other epothelons as well. So this is a macrolide. And two more natural products which were also considered to be, you know, very good anti-cancer agents in 90s were dictyostatin and discodermolide. So these are the five natural products where many synthetic groups were focusing on developing new methods, new strategies for their total synthesis. Okay, today what we will do, we will focus on one of them uh, that is elithrobin. See this structure of elithrobin, if you look at, um, it has three rings, you can call it as A, B, C ring and you have two side chains, one here and one here. Okay. This was isolated in 90s from Elithrobia species of marine soft corals found in Indian Ocean. Okay. And it was isolated in few milligram and Fenichel's group uh, which isolated this compound proposed this structure. Okay. Of, of course, as you know, uh, it was through various uh, high, high field NMR studies they could propose the correct structure of Elithrobin. Nevertheless, <coughs> it is important from synthetic point of view uh, to synthesize this compound and to prove the absolute configuration because absolute configuration was not known that time. Then the second most important thing about uh, this particular molecule is since this was isolated from marine soft corals, as you know marine soft corals uh, particularly uh, if it is in very sensitive region then you cannot go back and then isolate more of them. So from that angle also, if this molecule has to be made or to be made available for further medicinal and biological studies and this could be done only through synthesis. So from these two angles, uh, it was very important to develop a good strategy and using this strategy one should be able to make not only elithrobin but also several analogs. So as I said, many groups were involved in the total synthesis of elithrobin, but I will talk about two total synthesis. Today I will talk about one total synthesis reported by K.C. Nicolau. Okay. And as I said, this was as active as Taxol okay. and it showed a high activity against various cancer cells and it worked with the IC50 range of 10 to 15 nanomolar. Okay. That is quite significant. And the mechanism of action of elithrobin was almost like paclitaxel. Okay. So this is another reason why <coughs> many groups were interested in making this molecule. Okay. And also it, it worked against various types of cancer like breast, renal, ovarian and lung cancer. From the structural point of view, when the synthetic chemist wants to synthesize, it has three rings, it's a tricyclic core structure having a six membered ring and the middle ring is nine membered and the right hand side ring is five membered. So all these three rings have six chiral centers and the middle ring, nine membered ring, that's a medium sized ring has six substituents. So a construction of nine membered rings with six substituents is quite challenging and overall in this molecule there were 10 chiral centers and out of that 4 were coming from 
the sugar sugar unit and in addition to the core structure that is the tricyclic ring six membered nine membered and five membered ring it also has two side chains one at the northern hemisphere so that is an alpha beta unsaturated system and the down it has a arabinose system okay these are the two side chains so a yeah, successful synthesis of erythrobin not only should address the synthesis of core structure but also an efficient synthetic route to the two side chains and nikolo uh, was the first one to report the total synthesis in 1997 and of course as i mentioned one of the major uh, issue was to assign the absolute configuration of uh, erythrobin so he could successfully assign the absolute configuration based on the starting material which he used and then further stereochemical elaboration and the key reaction in the synthesis of epithelium was an intramolecular addition of lithium acetylide intramolecular addition of lithium acetylide to an alpha beta unsaturated oleate okay that was the key reaction to make the 10 membered ring and afterwards the 10 membered ring was converted into 95 bridged system okay and of course it was made easy uh, since he started with a commercially available monoterpene called a carbo and look at this structure so it's uh, quite complex and his retrosynthesis uh, started with you know removal of this side chain first that can be attached by simple esterification likewise the other side chain this arabino pyranose can also be easily attached so the first disconnection of erythrobin was removal of these two side chains removal of these two side chains and the third important connection um, as i said first the starting material is from carbon which has the same six membered ring with uh, a double bond methyl group and an isopropyl group so it was uh, very easy to identify the starting material and construction of bc ring is quite challenging because a ring is commercially available you have to attach the b and c ring so he used two three key reactions one as i said the intramolecular addition intramolecular addition of the triple bond the triple bond later became double bond here overall uh, how he planned was he first may started with a ring that is a ring at six membered ring then he attached a 10 membered ring okay so the 10 membered ring is the combination of b and c ring then the 10 membered ring he converted into 9 and 5 b and c ring he formed from the 10 membered ring that is how he made essentially 6 9 5 tricyclic ring okay let us see how he did this first he started with carbon and as you know the carbon uh, has two double bonds one is electron rich the other one is electron deficient so what can selectively epoxidize the electron deficient double bond in the presence of electron rich double bond by alkaline hydrogen peroxide so alkaline hydrogen peroxide epoxidized the electron deficient double bond so now what one has to do is to reduce the electron rich double bond so that was easily done under standard hydrogenation condition so now you have introduced the isopropyl group which is required for erythrobin a ring okay what is required now now you need to attach two substituents at these two carbons okay two substituents at these two carbons at the same time you don't want this epoxide what you want is a double bond isn't it now we have basically we have to, we have protected the double bond as epoxide but in the long run before we go for total synthesis you need that as a double bond so what you can do one can think about a transposition okay so what he did before that you need to introduce a functional group here okay so if you treat with lda one can generate enolate and followed by conjugating with formaldehyde now you could introduce your functional group at this carb okay so that is done now you have to protect the primary hydroxyl group that can be easily done since it is primary hydroxyl group protection was done with tbs chloride and 
after protection now the next job is to as I said you have to introduce a functional group here and you have to remove the epoxy. Okay. So, what he did? He reduced the ketone, he reduced the ketone with L selectide stereoselectively to get alpha alcohol. Okay. Then this alpha alcohol was converted into a mesylate. Okay. So, you got the mesylate. His idea was to cleave the epoxy, okay, to cleave the epoxy and bring this as an allylic alcohol. Okay. That can be done with sodium naphthalenide. So, when sodium naphthalenide will cleave this COMS bond, then it will open up the epoxy to get allylic alcohol. Okay. So, now if you look at this structure, if you look at this structure, what one needs is you need a functional group here and the double bond should shift here. And what you have is an allylic alcohol. Okay. This allylic alcohol, if you recall some of the rearrangements you have studied, allylic alcohols, if you attach appropriate substituents on the alcohol, then it can undergo a 3 3 sigma tropic rearrangement. That is, Claisen rearrangement it can undergo. That way, the double bond will migrate, and in the process, you can also introduce a functional group. Okay. So, with that idea, the Claisen rearrangement was done. The Claisen rearrangement you treat with uh, triethyl ortho, ortho acetate. Okay. Triethyl ortho acetate in the presence of propionic acid, catalytic, propionic, catalytic amount of propionic acid followed by heating. Okay. So, that will give you this intermediate and this goes through this intermediate. Okay. On treatment with triethyl ortho acetate, it undergoes intramolecular Claisen rearrangement and that will give you this gamma delta unsaturated ester, alpha, beta, gamma, delta unsaturated ester. Whenever you see a gamma delta unsaturated ester, the reaction which should come to your mind is Claisen rearrangement. So, now we have an ester and what you need is an aldehyde. So, that can be easily done by reducing with Dibol H. Okay. Dibol will reduce the ester to get the aldehyde. Okay. So, so that is a AB ring fragment. Okay. AB ring fragment that means, so now you have to attach the C ring and then make the B C ring. So, this fragment is made now. So, what is required now? You have to make the two side chains. First, you have to make the sugar fragment. So, for that you start with arabinose. So, arabinose when you convert that into acetate, that per acetylation will give you this tetraacetate. Okay. Now, if you treat with phenyl thiol in the presence of Lewis acid, this anomeric acetate, anomeric acetate can be easily replaced by SPH. It is a standard standard reaction. So, Lewis acid will coordinate here and then this will expel the OSE. So, you will get an oxonium ion, then phenyl thiol will attack and you will get the SPH replacing the OEC. Okay. Then you can remove all the acetate in one part by treating with potassium carbonate methanol. So, you get the corresponding triol. If you look at this triol, these two diols are cis whereas these two are trans. So, cis 1 2 diol can be easily protected as astronite. So, that is what being done. So, you protect the cis 1 2 diol here and this can be written like this. You know it is just 180 degree just rotate if you rotate and this is what you get. Why I have drawn this way was this will be useful while you convert this into chair like transition state. 
chair like product ok. The chair confirmation when you want to convert this into chair confirmation then this will be more useful than this. So, that is why I ask you to rotate it by 180 degrees ok. Now, you see this is the chair confirmation and the dial is protected, this dial is protected and the equatorial alcohol now you can protect it as PMP ether ok. Sodium hydride PMP chloride will give you the protected PMP ether then you can also remove the astronide. You can remove the astronide by treating with paratoluene sulfonic acid and water ok. Now, both hydroxyl groups are protected as TBS ether and this SPH, SPH can be removed by treating with NBS acetone and water ok. So, this should be converted into a good leaving group now, this should be converted into a good leaving group. So, that when you make the core structure, when you make the core structure of elithrobene then you should be able to couple ok. So, for that you treat with trichloroastronitrile ok, sodium hydride and trichloroastronitrile and this OH becomes OCNHCCl3 that is trichloroacetamide ok. So, this is the sugar fragment which we need to couple with their allylic alcohol. In the B ring you will have an allylic alcohol that allylic alcohol you have to combine ok. So, we have made now the sugar fragment and then A B ring fragment and the third fragment which we need is the alpha beta and saturated carboxylic acid. So, this is a commercially available uh, compound and it can be also easily prepared from the corresponding aldehyde. If you have an aldehyde here ok, then one can do Wittig reaction to get this alpha beta and saturated ester. Then hydrolyze the ester to get the corresponding acid or in situ one can also add pyrolyl chloride. So, to get this mixed anhydride ok. So, now you have the side chain of the northern hemisphere and you also have the sugar fragment and you have the A B fragment what you need is you have to attach the C fragment. So, how one can do that is you have this aldehyde ok. So, this upon treatment with ethyl vinyl ether and tertiary butyl lithium. So, what does it do? When you have ethyl vinyl ether on treatment with tertiary butyl lithium, it will pick up this proton and it will generate this lithium species ok. This lithium species will add to this aldehyde and you will get the corresponding allylic alcohol ok. And this is enol ether is not it? This is still enol ether. So, the enol ether upon hydrolysis with acid you will get the corresponding ketone ok. Now, as I said you have to make C ring also and the key reaction in the total synthesis of elithrobene by Nikolov is a intramolecular addition of lithium acetylide. So, that means you need to add a triple bond. So, the triple bond was added in the form of acetylene magnesium bromide ok. You take acetylene and then treat with you know convert into the corresponding grignard. This gives you the corresponding tertiary allylic alcohol. So, once you have this tertiary allylic alcohol, now what one can do see the TBS which is protected uh, the primary alcohol can be cleaved with TBAF to get the corresponding primary alcohol ok. Once you have this primary alcohol, you already have a secondary alcohol and tertiary alcohol ok. All the hydroxyl groups can be now protected as TS ether ok. So, now you see you have three hydroxyl groups being protected as TS ether. Now, once you have this selectively one can remove the primary TS ether, primary TS is level compared to secondary and tertiary. So, this is easily cleaved with PPTS and methanol ok. Once you have the primary alcohol, now you need to homologate ok. If you see the elithrobene structure you need an allylic alcohol here, you need an allylic alcohol here. That means, this primary alcohol should be oxidized and then homologate ok. The primary alcohol should be oxidized and homologated. So, what you should do 
you should oxidize this uh, primary alcohol and that can be done under very mild condition so that you don't see the epimerization at the adjacent carbon. So this is done uh, by several oxidizing agents. What Niccolo has used is tetra n propyl ammonium peruthenate. Tetra n propyl ammonium peruthenate. It's a ruthenium based reagent. Uh, in short, it is called as TPAF uh, in catalytic ammon and the co-oxidant is NMO. So that oxidizes the primary alcohol to corresponding aldehyde. So once you have this aldehyde, then you carry out a novanagel condensation with this ester, ethyl cyanoacetate. In the presence of beta alanine ethanol, you carry out a novanagel condensation to get this alpha beta unsaturated ester which also has a cyanide, which also has a cyanide. So now if you reduce this with the dibol, so you have two groups which can be reduced. One is cyanide and the other one is ester. So cyanide if you reduce with dibol, we know that it can be reduced to aldehyde. And if you take ester, if you take ester and then treat with dibol, uh, ester can be reduced to corresponding primary alcohol. So in one part he converted the cyanide into aldehyde and ester into CH2OH. And if you look at again the structure of erythrobin, this is what you need in weaving and what you need is you have to somehow connect this, the triple bond and aldehyde. If you connect it, you will get a 10 membered ring. Okay. So here he, he wanted to connect this with that aldehyde. Before that he thought it is better to connect the side chain. Okay, it is better to connect the side chain to the primary alcohol. So already made the sugar unit. So this on treatment the TMS triplate, then you can see the sugar unit was attached to the primary alcohol. Okay. So now all free hydroxyl groups are protected. If you look at this structure, all the free hydroxyl groups are protected. That paves way for generating anion here and then adding to the aldehyde. So that paves way for generating anion here and adding to the aldehyde. So this is easily done by treating with lithium hexamethyl diacylacide. So when you take lithium hexamethyl diacylacide, it generates the acetylide and under dilute condition, the acetylide intramolecularly adds to the aldehyde to form the corresponding allylic alcohol. Okay. So now what we have done, we have started with the A ring, we have attached the sugar unit and we also made a joint BC ring. Okay. So now from the BC ring, we have to really make B and C ring. Okay. So BC ring is 10 membered ring. Now we have to make a 9 membered B ring and 5 membered C ring. And for that what one has to do, you have to reduce this triple bond and this hydroxyl group, this OTS should be made as hydroxyl group and that has to attack here. Okay. So to do this, first we need to oxidize the alcohol here. To do this, we should oxidize the alcohol here. So when you treat with desmartin peroetinate, okay, desmartin peroetinate is a very good reagent for oxidation of allylic alcohols, uh, you know, like manganese dioxide. PDC, desmartin periodon is a very good reagent for oxidation of allylic alcohol. So that gives the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Okay. Now when you remove the PMB group, because the PMB group uh, is little bulky, so it is better to remove the PMB group uh, by treating with DDQ, you get the free hydroxyl group. Then you reduce the triple bond to the double bond. At the same time, it is better to reprotect the hydroxyl as acetate. Okay. So first the secondary alcohol was protected as acetate and secondary TS group and then tertiary TS group were removed and followed by the key reaction the, that is the reduction of the triple bond, followed by the key reaction that is the reduction of the triple bond 
uh, when you do that with lintel catalyst, the triple bond is reduced to cis double bond. Okay, triple bond is reduced to cis double bond. At the same time, the tertiary alcohol, okay, it can attack the ketone intramolecularly to form the lactal. Okay, so now you can see the real core structure of erythrobin A B C ring. Everything is there. What needs to be done is you need to convert this hydroxyl into methoxy and also attach the side chain. Okay. So, these two can be done subsequently. First, you treat this with PPTS methanol. So, PPTS methanol, what happens if this makes this hydroxyl as a leaving group and then the lone pair comes and then this breaks, that oxonium ion was attacked by methanol to form the methoxy. Okay. The oxonium ion was attacked by methoxy group that is methanol to get the methoxy group. Okay. So, now the methoxy group is introduced, the sugar unit is introduced, only thing left is the attachment of side chain in the northern hemisphere. Okay. So, already we prepared this uh, side chain, the mix these two in the presence of base that gives the alpha beta unsaturated ester. Okay. So, you have this next only one step that is to remove the TBS group. There are two TBS, TBS group in the sugar unit and that can be easily removed by fluoride agent. So, TBUF treatment will remove the TBS group leading to the formation of the natural product erythrobin. Okay. It is a very important total synthesis and it was the first total synthesis of erythrobin reported in the literature. And if you look at the key reaction, the key reaction is the intramolecular addition of lithium acetylide to the aldehyde to get the 10 member ring. Okay. And then the hydrogenation of the triple bond to double bond followed by cyclization to form the 5 member ring. These are the two key steps in the total synthesis of uh, uh, erythrobin reported by uh, Casey Nicolau. And overall, uh, this total synthesis was done in 27 longest linear steps, 27 longest linear steps. Uh, it is a linear synthesis. If you look at this synthesis carefully, it is a linear synthesis and with an overall yield close to 1 percent. So, considering the complexity of this natural product, an overall yield of 1 percent and starting with the commercially available monoterpene uh, carbon is really a significant and then a classical one. Okay. So, with this uh, we will stop here uh, and then uh, tomorrow we will talk uh, more about uh, another uh, synthesis of erythrobin and this time uh, the synthesis was accomplished by Samuel Tadshift. Okay, thank you.